You are the body of Christ gathered. You chose to be anywhere, and you chose to be here, and we are now connected one to another in the spirit of Christ, and also with our web community from literally around the world. Thanks be to God. The other piece of thanks I have is that, as far as I know, with no one running up here, I am the only announcement today. It's not a bad thing, right? Not a bad thing. Now, some of you have already signed the card that we will mark as one of the ways that we are saying goodbye to Abby Haskell today. If you haven't signed that card, it exists out in the atrium. Your greeting, your blessing, your sending her on her way is an important part of today. So please take the time, just before you go to the cake, just before you go to all the refreshments, take some time and sign that card. Now, the very last thing I have for you before we bring ourselves into worship with some fantastic bell ringing, I want you to pay attention. You have, either in your bulletin or in the floor right at your feet, a envelope that is for one great hour of sharing. That envelope can convey a blessing of ministry beyond our wildest imagination, so that our imaginations may have some information I invite your attention to the screens in our sanctuary at this time. Ecumenical at its best, interfaith to be sure, one great hour of sharing, your participation is a blessing and we invite your generosity. And now as we move into our time of deeper worship, 
I invite your hearts and your souls to be beckoned into that worship with our bell choir presentation. Please listen and be moved. My friends, I invite all who are able and for whom it's comfortable to please stand with me that we might share our call to worship found in our bulletin this morning. Holy One, we come before you thankful that your love for us is exactly what we need. Your love with us is exactly what we need. You love us the way we are. We are, we are creatures of your hand. We are a community formed by the power of your spirit. You are the potter, we are the clay. In this Lenten journey, shape us with your sure and loving hands. Hear us as we sing our song of praise.
I invite your voices to be shared with mine in our unison prayer of confession as we move into now our fourth Sunday in Lent. Let us say together one heart, soul, and voice. Reconciling God, compassionate Christ, we realize that we have often resembled enemy agents more than ministers of reconciliation. With angry words and vindictive actions, we have harmed our sisters and brothers. We distance ourselves from those who disappoint us or remind us of our own human. Forgive us, O oh God. Lift us to a higher, holier purpose. Help us to draw as close to each other as you drew to us in Christ. Help us to regard persons no longer from a human point of view, but from the vantage point of the cross, where all hostility was conquered, all forgiveness assured. Amen. Good morning. I have something to share with you. This is my adventure backpack. And I take it on many, many adventures and camping trips and mission trips and traveling far and wide. And I'm going to take it with me. My boys and I are going to start a new adventure with a new church in a couple of weeks. We'll start a new ministry and worship and life with them in Acton, serving Christ. So what I wanted you to know is this backpack is also a spiritual backpack, and I carry lots and lots of God's blessings in here. And the blessing of your love lives in this backpack. And I want to show you what your love looks like. Do you want to see what it looks like? Yeah. How many of you have seen this? Yeah. And this, there's something special about this. What is it? What is it, Simon? It's a cross. What else about it, Hope? Well, Jesus died. Yeehaw, you got it, woman. <laughs> what else? Do you know this one? Wow, it's a 
symbol of love and our unique way of cherishing God. That's beautiful. Yes? That's right. This is the wood from the old church. There was a church that was here some, before some of you were born, and it burnt down. And I was serving in Dover at the time, and I remember talking with my cousin Lucy, and we were crying for you and praying for you in Dover. And then I came here, and this beautiful building was here, but more than the building, it was the beautiful people that knew more about God's love and God's strength that carries you through times of trial. You are an Easter people that live God's new life and hope, and that is how I bring you with me. Your love has healed my own heart, and I know myself as a person of new life because of your love. So thank you. Would you pray with me? Most holy and gracious God, we give you thanks that your love is with us when times get tough. God, help us to share your love and new life with a world that needs this hope. Oh, most holy God, bless us as we say goodbye, remembering that as members of your family and in your love, we never really have to say goodbye. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may go to your church school class.
Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. This is the beginning of Psalm 107, verses 1 through 3 and 17 through 22. As I read today, I would like to do so responsibly. So where I indicate, please respond with, Give thanks to the Lord, who because he is good, his steadfast love endures forever. And then the scripture continues. Repeat these words in praise to the Lord, all you whom he has saved. He has rescued you from your enemies and has brought you back from foreign countries, from east and west, from north and south. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Some were fools suffering because of their sins and because of their evil. They couldn't stand the sight of food and they were close to death. Give thanks to the Lord, because he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Then in their trouble they called to the Lord, and he saved them from their distress. He healed them with his command, and he saved them from the grave. Give thanks to the Lord, because he is good. His steadfast love they must thank the Lord for his constant love, for the wonderful things he did for them. They must thank him with sacrifices, and with songs of joy must tell all that he has done. Let us end the scripture in Psalms today by singing together the twofold Amen. <clears throat> It wasn't all that long ago, although it seems forever, when Abby came to me and said, you know, um, my journey is taking me elsewhere. And I tried to be mature about that. <laughs> I failed. But I did realize that it was the movement of the Spirit, and I do rejoice in the psalmist proclamation of today. There's no doubt about that. And so I tried to wonder how, how might we indeed celebrate her presence amongst us and bless her on her way. And I asked her to enter into a dialogue with me about how we might do that. And in typical fashion, she said, no, I don't want to do it. No, 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 I'll just leave. I'll slip out. No one will notice. Not true. But then it is also typical of her, she said, let me ponder that. Let me ruminate about that. Let me pray about that. And so she did. And about 37 seconds later, she got back to me. And she said, well, you know, maybe, maybe I can tell a story. A story has bubbled up for me. So I said, great, great. And Abby, I'm wondering if you would be so kind as to share the story that has bubbled up for you. This is a story that um, I've told at Pilgrim Lodge, and it is a story that Renee Garrett tells in her book, One Man's Roses. It's a story of a little girl named Marta. Marta, who comes running in, Mama, Mama, these are for you, and holds up a bouquet of lilacs. Her mother gets down on her knees and brings those sweet flowers to her nose and takes a deep breath. I says, oh, thank you, Marta. These are beautiful. And she gives her little girl a big hug. Now, 
Martha's mother knew better than to ask her where she had gotten the flowers. <laughs> they didn't have a lilac bush at their house. They didn't really have much of a house. They really didn't even have much in the way of food. Martha's mother had to go out every day in search of food for Martha and her brother. And there were some nights Martha knew that mom couldn't find anything for them to eat. You see, because Martha was growing up in Germany just after World War II. And Germany was in ruins. Buildings were in rubble. There was dust and dirt everywhere. Roads had been made so that jeeps and trucks could come through. But everything was in ruins. There was no electricity. There was no water coming out of the faucets. And people were discouraged. Now, Marta, she was only four. She was just relieved that the awful sounds of war had stopped and that she could finally go outside to play with her friends. One day, jeeps and trucks did come traveling down those cleared roads, and there were strangers that came out of these trucks in uniforms that were scary looking, and they spoke a language no one understood, and the children were frightened, and the adults were worried until one day those American soldiers started to hand out chocolate candies. And you can imagine how good those chocolate candies <coughs> tasted after having been so hungry. Well, Martha, she tried to get more than one. She waited in line. She wanted to be able to share the chocolates with her brother and mother. But the soldier just hold up held up one finger, letting her know she could only have one. And this became a regular ritual. She saw the same soldiers day after day. And she had one she liked in particular. He had the kindest smile. And he always made sure that the bigger kids didn't shove her out of the way whenever the gum and candy came out. On the day that she saw those lilacs, she knew she had to give some to her mother. And the very next day, she knew she needed to give some so to her soldier friend. And she felt so brave when she went up and got those lilacs. And she went over, and all of a sudden, she felt very shy when she saw her soldier friend standing by his jeep with his other friends. And she put the flowers behind her back and was even ready to leave. But he saw her. And he left his soldier friends and came right over to her. He got down on his knees and took off his helmet. So his little friend didn't have to look up. And he brought out of his pocket the largest chocolate bar Martha had ever seen. Her eyes grew wide with surprise. And slowly those lilacs came out from behind her back. And this time it was the soldier's turn have his eyes grow wide with surprise. And if Marta could have understood English, she would have heard that soldier say, Oh my, I haven't seen lilacs since I left my home in Maine. Marta took the chocolate bar with a smile, a gift given, and the soldier took the lilacs, tucked them in his sh shirt pocket, a gift received. Martha and the soldier, her soldier friend, parted and they never saw each other again. But Martha always remembered those lilacs and the power that they had to bring a smile to someone's face when there really wasn't much to smile about in those days. And that young soldier, well, he went on to another town and another town and eventually that lilac wilted and he had to throw it away and he did come back home and the next spring when those lilacs bloomed he remembered his little german friend and he collected those lilacs and he gave them to his girlfriend he gave them to his mother he gave them to a neighbor who was suffering and he made a commitment that day that every day he would be just like little Mark and give something of beauty to make this world a better place, especially to those who are suffering. And he did. 
It was with a kind word or other flowers or with a helping hand. He did something to make this world a more beautiful place. And I want to thank you. I want to thank you, thank you, thank you. Each and every day that I have walked and worked with you, there has been something that you've done that has made this world a more beautiful place. And my heart has been healed. My heart has been made whole. And my heart is overflowing with blessings. I give you thanks for the way you share God's steadfast love in this world. May God continue to bless the way you share lilacs and chocolate with this world. Amen. So we continued the conversation. <laughs> and Abby said, Doug, I'll tell this story, and, and then you'll make the theological connections. <laughs> and as is indicative of our relationship, I said, oh, Abby, no. The one thing you should never do is tell people what a story meant. Because they know. And I think maybe you have already shared about why this story bubbled up for you. Is there anything else you want to share about why this story, why now? Uh, you have taught me a lot about what it means to um, not only give, but you taught me how to receive and how to be healed, and how to release that love into the world. And that's how my time with you has felt, and I am so thankful for this gift, and the way God's love has been made real. Thank you. So wanting to take Abby's invitation seriously, and knowing that my doctorate is profound and deep, <laughs> I did my research. I did. I did my research. And I discovered that St. John and St. Paul and St. George and St. Ringo <laughs> wrote it down a long, long time ago. And, and they wrote the truth and then sang it on all albums called Abbey Road. <laughs> they said, and in the end. The love you take is equal to the love you make. Mm. So just that you might have a, um, a sense of that, that sense of gifting and being gifted, that sense of giving and receiving, that sacerdotal, sacramental <laughs> understanding, I'm going to ask to remove this from you and to share with you and all a stole that was made by our fabric artist, Kathy Lee. And it is yours to carry on with you the um, elements of the sacrament and the Bible surrounded by a rainbow of hope and promise. So Abby, Blessings to you. And as if that weren't bad enough, you still have to hang around and greet people and have some cake as well. That sounds wonderful. Blessings to you, Abby. Blessings to you. Thank you.
please, please be seated. Our prayer time is a time of privilege, peace, and power. It is a time when we go deep and spread wide. It is a time that we hold folks close, even at great distance. And today is at a time when we bless friends on their way to new ministry settings. It is a time when you will see the handiwork not only in stole, but also in the card that you will sign with Art Morissette and his artistic nature. It's a time I give thanks for all of that. And prayer time is a time to hold close people who are struggling, people who are in our hearts and minds. So I lift up Matt Upton, who is but the latest casualty of snowboarding and recovering, I understand, quite nicely, but nevertheless, some uh, surgical intervention was necessary. Ongoing prayers for Cindy Howard, and now for Ray Boardman, who is Steve's brother with lung cancer. Donna Goulding's son, Russell Miller, ongoing prayers for Pam's sister-in-law, Susan. Ongoing prayers for Annie Cote, and for Karen Nielsen, and for those who struggle in ways we may not see, but when we do, we get to know the struggle for mental health or against mental illness. It is often an invisible struggle, but when we see it, we hold it close and pray for God's presence as well. So those are the prayers that I bring, and as I ask the diaconate to come about halfway down that we might hear your prayers, I wonder what are the prayers you bring? Prayers of joy and celebration, prayers of care and concern. Mary, will you start us out? Our neighbor, um, Bud Lamson, is missing from the bell choir today. He um, had a fall and injury um, just the day before yesterday, and he's recovering at home. He's doing well, but we miss him. Indeed, Bud is uh, healing from a fall, unable at this point to lift. You may recognize Bud is one of the smaller gentlemen in the bell choir, but he rings the largest bells. And so his injury is uh, preventing him from doing that at this time. Um, Ray, yes, and then Bill. For over the last year, we have been saying prayers for a young man from our church by the name of Brian McKeever, who is a US Marine. And he's just, I think he's still in the balcony. I just recognized him a minute ago. He just returned from Afghanistan and Iraq. There he is. Welcome home, Brian. We love you. I didn't think Marines could blush. Oh, <laughs> uh, welcome back, Brian. God bless you. Um, okay, down here first. I would first like to acknowledge in two days it'll be a year that my mother passed away. Her name is Lillian, and there isn't a day that goes by that we don't miss her. Yeah. And Thursday I have to have surgery on my ankle, and I pray that all goes well. Thank you. For the way loved ones still reside in our hearts every day. And for the healing intent of God to be visited upon you through surgeons and doctors and nurses and the prayers of this community. Safe journey. Troy, right here with Lou. Thank you, Abby. I will never look at lilacs the same ever again. Um, on a sad note, a very dear friend of mine is in the hospital, and she, her lung collapsed um, on Thursday, and she is, has lung cancer. Her first name is Nancy. No relation to my sister Nancy, by the way. Um, but she is in her final hours of 
her journey here on Earth, and she's scared because she doesn't know what's going to happen next. Sure. So I offer my prayer to a safe journey to home, God. For Nancy and all those who are coming to the end of their earthly journey, that, that this community and she may discern, discern God's presence even at such a time. Yes, Pam, first. Hello, I'm bipolar, and I would just like to say that I pray to God to grant me and all in each and one of us peace of heart, mind, body, and soul. Yes. For God's peace that is way beyond our understanding, body, mind, and soul. Sue? Um, I'm going to ask for traveling mercies for me as I travel to California to be with my sisters for a week and enjoy a great time. And um, also for my daughter-in-law's mother, June, who's been diagnosed with a debilitating, incurable disease. Mm. For June and her struggle, that you will tell her that we're holding her tenderly. And did you ask if you could go to California? <laughs> <laughs> traveling, traveling mercies anyway. God bless you. Carol? Prayers for Joseph Zook and his family. He is currently at Seal Rock. Prayers for Joseph Zook and his family. That, that all the ministrations at Seal Rock and all the family love may be genuinely felt and deeply appreciated by him. I'd like prayers. My neighbor, Libby, um, died in the early morning hours Friday. She hit a tree. She was 18. And uh, her mother, Doreen, and father, Kevin, need a little prayer. There's nothing I can say, you know, how words aren't enough. Libby. For the tragedy of sudden death and the way that affects people, Ray, Ray, excuse me, Ray, don't go too far. Cindy has one right back there. Um, this is uh, prayers of joy and concern, uh, ongoing concern, I hope, for all of you, for me, as um, next week I will begin a new ministry, an interim ministry, at the Union Congregational Church in York Beach. So if you ever want to worship at the beach instead of here, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I, will, uh, I, I will begin my ministry there next week. <laughs> Doug won't let me back in. Um, and secondly, uh, our daughter Sarah has accepted a call to ministry and we'll begin studying at Andover Newton in the fall. And as a mom and as a woman in ministry, um, I covet your prayers for her and uh, for her ongoing search as she seeks out her call. And I thank you for your support of all of us, all of us Strozels doing our ministry apart from this place but always returning to this our home. Cindy, I can see where you, all of those prayers are both joys and concerns. <laughs> <laughs> and know that, we, know that we bless you as well. Yes. Thank you. Um, let's do one here, and then we'll finish with our web. I just wanted to say to Brian up there, we realize and honor your presence back, and also, at the same time, realize that integration is not the easiest thing and would like to embrace you as a family again and give you support as you do that. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Amen. And now, just before we go to our web community, I heard a groan from our choir. <laughs> I see the floor. <laughs> I wasn't the groaner, but I did want to uh, just recognize and offer prayer for the uh, Tripp family who lost another member this week, um, Ron, and um, they were our former members of this church calling hours this afternoon at Cody's. 
Thank you. For the Tripp family now grieving loss, thank you for that prayer. Jeff, what do you bring us? Yes, uh, first for the family of Tina, a uh, mid-30s mother of two who finally succumbed to cancer after a year-long battle. Uh, from Linda for Carolyn, healing and wholeness, having surgery this Thursday. And from Karen for uh, Monson, Ma Massachusetts residents, healing from the tornado that hit there. Thank you, Jeff. Shirley, last one. I would like to ask prayers for my husband, Bill, who has just been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. For that long journey with Alzheimer's that has touched many in this community and now yet one more. And surely, not just for Bill, but for yourself as well, our prayers of God's healing intent and presence through that journey. I know there are more. I'm going to draw us to a close right now. Open your hearts. Open your ears. Listen. Most gracious God, on such a day as this, filled as it is with blessing and uncertainty, in such times as these, filled with blessings and uncertainties, in the fullness of our prayers of joy and celebration and with our uncertainties, well, we give you thanks, O oh God that your loving embrace is wide enough to draw it all in close to your divine heart. That our steps might be informed, guided, and inspired by your presence, we pray. For those that we have spoken out loud into the sanctuary of this space, and for those prayers that have remained in our hearts, because we could not speak. And for those prayers around which we have yet to find words. Oh God, we offer all of this to you. And we draw our thoughts and our hearts and our minds and our souls together. And we give voice to our prayers by singing your son's prayer. <laughs>
form of prayer is the way that we present ourselves as offerings. Your presence here today has started that. Your awareness of all that we might do on God's behalf now continues. And so I invite your generosity, yes, of physical manifestations, but also your generosity of spirit, intent, thoughtfulness. Let it be gifts of chocolate and lilacs. Let it be placed in the plate imaginatively to the glory of God and in service of Jesus Christ. Use us, 
to your glory and in the name of Jesus Christ, that good news may be abundant in every place these gifts are. Amen. Above you to bless you and beneath you to uphold you and beside you to love and sustain you from this moment now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.